Hey, my tiniest little pumpkins, I'm back. I gotta be really quiet because Casey just put Emma to sleep, and if I wake her up, Casey will kill me, and Emma will grow up without a father. But look, I have brought in the Komodo dragons into Siana, like we said, and I think they fit perfect right here at the start of the park. Remember how before we were talking about maybe just doing some, uh, like, uh, meerkats or maybe even the binturongs? We were just kind of thinking about doing some little derpy things like that. Well, now that I got up in here with the Komodo Island, it literally is an island because remember, this was going to be an island. Now, I still have to do a little bit of work on the path, but I... I'm really pleased with this setup. You'll also notice I uh, I got rid of the um uh, of the tree that we had right here in the middle of the uh, enclosure, just because it kind of it kind of blocked the, our our main view a little too much. So I kind of got rid of it, but I think it works out because it gives the Komodos m less shade and more sun, you know, more sun spots um, that they can lay back and kind of sun and get warmed up in. So, I don't think it actually looks that terrible with that tree missing. So, yeah. I don't really... I know some people were asking me if I have any plans as far as, like, spooking up Suyana. Um, not really. I think, honestly, I think that uh, Lost Creek and Little Creek kind of lend themselves a little better to, um, you know, kind of spooking up and the Halloween vibes and stuff. But I think for Sayana, you know, we don't, we, I guess we don't really need to do that. It's, it's got enough theming and enough weirdness going on that, um, like I said, those other parks, we can, we can kind of worry about that. But, um, nonetheless, look, I have an entire island that I have to fill. I've destroyed all kinds of habitats that we need to kind of figure out what new is going to go in here. So, Suyana is almost, I feel it's almost a blank slate again. I am just having a ton of fun getting back in here and essentially reimagining all of this theming. And if you have, uh, if you've watched the channel eh, in the last month and a half, two months, you can see the lion area has completely been redone. Like once you come through the little African village area here, Check this out. This is the new lion and um, African elephant habitats. And they're kind of like just matching through here. I think they just go together really, really well sharing this path. It's kind of like one of the one of the little main viewing areas into the into the lion's den. You got some little babies. Just so much cleaner now. Like I said, when I was kind of when I was doing these videos. Probably about a month or two ago. Uh, my biggest thing is, I think that this design is so much more mature than the the old Suyana elephant areas, lion areas. It's just like taking a lot of cues from Leaf, Remnant, um, J. Ash, even you know bringing in some of Beyond Drew's realism, and um, I just feel that. From a design standpoint, this is where we should be after almost three years with our hands on the game. You know, you should kind of, if you play it as much as I do, you should progress to this level of design. And, and you know, I it's kind of like, I know at first I went way, way hyper real, you know, hyper, uh, hyper fantasy. But I find that now it's more of a challenge to me and it actually keeps me playing the game longer when I try to do more realistic, because it's not just, like we said in past videos, it's not necessarily just throwing spaghetti at the wall. You really, I, I would argue that building realistically is a lot harder than hyper fantasy. Hyper fantasy, you don't have any constraints. You don't have to worry about if this incline would work or what kind of night house would they have. Their night house is a massive temple with a mountain behind it. Like there's... There's really not a lot of, um, you know, constraints with that. And it just, it, um, and, and don't get me wrong, it can lead to a lot of really innovative and creative, you know, designs. But 
building realistic like this and switching Suyana to a more realistic type build, um, it just it just kind of forces you to adapt. It forces you to learn new designs, learn what looks right, new foliage mixes that you might not do. Um, I think with realism, I can't rely on rocks as much. Um, you you can't hide as much stuff. There's just um, it just presents a whole nother challenge to the game that I didn't really let myself be a part of uh, the first the first couple years playing this. But now we are full on, um, you know, trying to flex our realistic creative muscles with some of these habitats, even with Komodo Island to an extent. Remember, I told you this is kind of. Um, almost like a, a loose layout of the Komodo habitat in Disney's Animal Kingdom. I don't know if you guys have ever taken that trail before, but they have a couple Komodo dragons there, and their their habitat is almost so small, you, you, you might not even notice them if you're, you know, like if you don't stumble across the sign. But uh, nonetheless, I think that that is a um, kind of like a fun approach to take with this instead of just ultimately trying to go really, really fantasy. So, I don't know. I'm still just in love with this freaking parking lot that Remnant did for me. This whole, remember, he did this whole entrance, whole guest area for me, almost in a Islands of Adventure type vibe. It's like he just completely morphed into my brain here and kind of just designed this insanely awesome <laughs> nothing I could have done at this entrance would have matched this and I mean even come out here and look at the entrance sign as you drive up is that not killer kind of getting in here starting to look for your parking spot but yeah man the way just there is a lot going on with Sienna look the orangutans like Remember all of that? That's gone. I'm going to redesign that. I don't know if orangutans will go in there, but we're, we'll definitely, this is definitely going to be better. Like we're going to design this better. I mean, just like I said, look at all these open, it's just an, it's just a huge open book. And we've got our new little, this is new. This is kind of like our, um, Kind of like a little gift shop area. We've got the little bridge that crosses the creek. Bold's Jaguar Cafe's out that way. You've got Poison Blade's awesome uh, mountain in the background there. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what that's kind of what it, I wanted to bug you with. I just wanted to see what you guys thought about Komodo Island just being here and greeting you at the front of the park. I just I just thought it was a fun spot for it. You know, just thinking about where can I put it. Um, but anyways, this is Jaguar Falls over here. Kind of like the main little falls right when you come in. Really, really happy with how all that turned out. So yeah, you guys have to let me know like usual. I'm sure you, you guys, uh, I'm just loving the feedback again. Like I said, it's so, it's so weird to get YouTube notifications again when you guys are commenting and stuff. I read all the comments. I know I, I don't get a chance to reply back to everybody, but it is, uh, it's just fun to kind of be back making content again. So definitely appreciate you guys. But anyways, I'll jump on out of here. Like I said, I got to be quiet because if Emma screams, I'm dead. <laughs> I filmed this a little late. But uh, yeah, thank you. I will catch you guys uh, in the next non-SMR, ASMR, S-Dan video. Bye.